So we, we have these two options. Um, okay. This service is a regional service. That means that you can deploy your code, the same code in many, in many regions. Every region is a bunch of data servers. So if one region goes down, you can deploy your code in another region. Uh, what else? Yeah. So that is like the main point that your code could be deployed in different reg regions and you can use the same name in those regions. Uh, okay, the life cycle of a Lambda is the next one. Um, we we'll receive a single request. This request is going to trigger to awake a Lambda. So the Lambda needs, needs to be initialized, then invoke and run your code. But if we receive another request, because this Lambda is busy with our first request, AWS create another entity in order to make the second response. So at this point, we have two entities created. If another request arrives and the first two are busy, AWS creates another entity. So at this point, we have three entities created. And so if we receive another request, another entity will be created. But if we receive another request and we have already a Lambda created, that Lambda could respond or make responsible of that request. So the life cycle is we receive an event, the event trigger the Lambda, and at some point, AWS will kill your Lambda and will shoot it down. We don't, we can't configure that time that the Lambda is awake, but AWS guarantee that all your requests will be respond. We will talk about more about that. Uh, so oh, yeah, following the example, if another request arrives and we have already an Lambda wait, this Lambda will make responsible of that request and so on. And in case of the of this request, the night, we don't have a Lambda free, so another Lambda will be created to make responsible of that request. So talking about this life cycle, we have three main stages. The first one is the initialization, the invoke. This invoke uh, consider the code running. And finally, uh, the Lambda is killed. So we have three stages, three main stages. Uh, if we split the first stage, we can see that many, many steps are followed. Um, first, AWS creates or freeze an execution environment that is a Lambda with or configure, configures resources. So is this stage they need? So we, AWS needs to download the code for the Lambda and the layers. We are not going to talk about layers. We are only going to talk about the main idea of a Lambda, Lambda but a layer is an extra code that you can attach to your Lambda. and You can share that logic with many Lambdas. So it's like an extra code that you can attach to your Lambda and you can use it in many Lambdas. That is a layer. Uh, and mostly are, are used for dependencies, mostly, but you can add 
utils or another logic. The next step is the extension, the extensions are started. Extensions are like, like plugins. There are plugins made by AWS and by other users. And we initialize the runtime. The runtime is basically the programming language that you are going to use. And finally, we are the AWS Lambda will run your code. So all these steps are run in the first stage, that is this one, the init. So if you are thinking in use an AWS Lambda, you need to consider there that every time that a new request arrives, this time is spent mostly like one second or less. It depends on the layers and the, um, the size of your code. More code and more layers and more extensions, your Lambda will be slower at the time that you want to receive a new request. Uh, any doubts until now? Uh, I think oh. no. Okay, thank you. Well, then if your Lambda didn't receive any requests, uh, they will kill it. And if another request arrives, all the process starts again. So the extensions use this time of this stage to clean up all the memory and all the stuff. And Lambda will maintain this execution environment for some time. We can't configure this time, so we don't know what amount of time for Lambda will be alive. And I think it's the last stage. Yeah, shoot down. Okay. So we see in this example that we need to take consideration of the request that we received because based on this traffic is the lambdas that are going to be created. So like they gave us a simple operation that is the average request per second uh, multiplied by the average request duration in seconds of your request. And you get the concurrency of your service or your endpoint. In that way, you can estimate how many lambdas will be created in one second. Uh, this important later, we are going to remember this, but this is a simple formula that you can use. Okay, and the main configuration parameters are the next one. We have two options for architecture. Uh, the memory size, we have a range between these megabytes. The timeout, this is also a range. So basically, if your code lasts more than this amount of seconds, the Lambda is going to be killed. No matter if your code is, isn't finished, the Lambda is going to be killed. So we also have to take care of this, this amount of seconds. The runtime, uh, basically the programming language that you use, uh, we can use Python, netcore, .NET, Go, Ruby, Node, and Java. There are other versions, but I think this is the newest one of each programming language. Mm. Okay, the female storage is a temp directory that is created in your Lambda. So if you need to create a file, you can use this directory but we only have this megabyte. 
if, if the lambda is killed, this directory is erased. So you only can use you only can use this directory. Meanwhile, the lambda is alive. If the lambda is killed, is erased. They erase everything. Uh, reverse concurrent executions. Basically, is the number of instances alive. So because AWS killed your lambdas after some time, you can decide that I want four lambdas alive all the time, but this is extra money. So you need to think well about this. Provision concurrency. Uh, basically, let me go further in the limitations. Uh, the concurrency limit is that you have this amount of instances across all your functions in a region. So in a re region, if you deploy one Lambda, that Lambda can create this amount of instances per second. If you create another Lambda, these two Lambdas share this amount of instances across. So this configuration, provision concurrency, you can define or configure that this entity use always this amount of Lambdas, like this, these Lambdas are reserved for this, this logic of this call and the other ones are for this Lambda. So this configuration means that are reserved for that code, but it doesn't mean that are alive. That configuration is the, the previous one. I don't know if it's confusing or, or you have doubt. I think no. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So these two options, of course, are an extra amount of money. So to reserve the amount of instances for a call and the amount of lambdas alive, this extra money. And we have also two options to deploy our code, zip our code like the name same there. Yeah. We make a zip file, upload this to S3 mainly, and then the Lambda download the code from there, or we can create a Docker image and upload that Docker image and the Docker image will be run. Uh, I think these are the main configurations that we can use uh there are more but i think these are the principal limitations okay the limitation of the lambda one that is important is that a lambda can be alive like running your code only for 15 minutes if your code is last longer the lambda will will be finished uh, we only can use five layers per Lambda. And the layers are the, this extra code that you can attach to your code. And we only can use five. Uh, the storage for uploaded code, if we use the zip way, you only can use 250 megabytes, uh, taking care of the function code and the layer code. So if these two elements uh, sum 250 megabytes, is like the limit. Docker image allows more uh, space for your code. Uh, so this is a good point. If we can use, if we want to use zip, we have that limitation, only 250 megabytes. Uh, the payload, uh, for each request is six megabytes and the responses 
uh, for the response of that payload is six megabytes. And asynchronous call to 50 kilobytes. Uh, there are those limitations. And the concurrency limit is that we can only have this amount of instances across all the functions in our region. And that is important because if your concurrency is greater than this number, maybe a Lambda is not an option for your solution. You need to use an EC2 or another service, but you need to take care of this, this number or make some movements that deploy your codes into multiple, multiple regions and each region serve a different client. Okay, so let's see the pricing. Until here, some doubts. I think no. <laughs> okay, the pricing. Uh, we want to make an example that we want to deploy a code that is 128 megabytes size. Our code runs an average duration of 300 milliseconds and our execution per month average is this number. <laughs> I forgot the, the name of the number. And we can use this calculator to make our example. So, I'm going to share. Oh, I'm going to share this link. Let me see where is the chat. Oh, it's here. So this is the link for the calculator. So we can give a description or GWX example. And first, because this is a service, a regional service, we need to define what region is going to be deployed or called. So we can define, let's say, this one, Ohio. Use is to. Uh, this service is for that includes a free tier. So let me check what is the free tier. I think I have it here. Oh yeah, the free free tier is this. You have this request per month and this gigabyte of computation per month also. So if your solution um, runs in this resources, you pay nothing. So that is a good service. <laughs> so we are going to use the free tier. The architecture, we are going to use this one. It really recommends to use this architecture if you are going to make uh, a lot of operations like our like, let me think, let me search. What was the name? Uh, yeah, but if you run, if your call only perform operations, AWS recommends this architecture. The number of requests, we are going to add this one, number of requests. This one, six zero. One, two, three, six. Okay. The duration of each request, 300 milliseconds. Amount of memory allocated. Uh, let's say the minimum moon value and the femoral storage allocated. This is the temp directory that is deleted after the Lambda is killed. So we are not going to use it. So we can use the default value. 
and provision concurrency, we are not going to use that. And lambda h, we are not going to use it. So this is the monthly cost of our service, only 40 cents. So I think it's a cheap uh, service. If we use more memory, Uh, save and be smart. For 12 months, we are going to pay only um, $5. So I this is a service that you can use that is useful and cheap. Uh, do you have any doubts about the pricing? Uh, I think no, uh, because it's a regional service. Some regions don't have all the features that are listed in the uh, in the documentation. So you need to search if that region has that feature. But because Lambda is a famous service, mostly all the services has all the ser all the features mostly. Okay. Uh, I think that's, those are the main points of a Lambda. Mm, so we can see our demo. If there are any doubts, you can see it or comment. Okay. If there are no doubts, we can see our example. Okay. Mm. Okay. So this is our example. We have uh, a project that the main idea of this project is that the users made post in social media to win a car. So we need to select a amount of winners based on two things. The number of posts that the users made. So more posts, more possibilities to win. Uh, if there is a tie, the users must be selected randomly. So that is our example. And the payload that we are going to receive is the next one. We have user metrics, the name of the users, and the amount of posts that that user made, and the amount of winners that the client wants. That is our payload. Uh, the tools that we need is we need to configure an AWS account, TAM. TAM is a service provided by AWS to deploy, deploy services. It's like Terraform. Uh, the other options that AWS have, has is CloudFormation. This the other tool. Okay. Uh, uh, the other tool is Docker. Um, mainly Docker is used by Sam to run locally for Lambda and Python 3. Why Python 3? Because it's the last version of Python that Lambda supports. Uh, so this is some, it's a AWS serverless application model. Based on a YAML template, we are going to create resources in the cloud. This is an example. For example, we can create Cognito that is for Authenticate users, API gateway to, to yes or no, to expose our Lambda because our Lambda lives inside AWS Cloud. So if you want to get that Lambda, we need to add another service before. And 
use a dynamic dynamo table. It's an example for SAM. So you can use SAM to deploy all your services. But in this case, we are going to use SAM to deploy a simple Python code. Okay, so let's jump to the to the example. This project I tried to do it like real. It's not super real, but has the main folders. We have a source folder with different modules, but the important part is here. Um, this file you can call it like you want, but the most common way is that you call it app. No, you can call it like you want. So we have two stages in this file. Everything that is outside of our handler, the handler is the main function that is going to be called when the lambda is triggered. So everything that is outside of this lambda is going to be run first when the lambda awakes. So if we receive a request, this code is going to be run first and then the handler. If our Lambda uh, is still alive, this code will not be run. If the Lambda is awake, only the Lambda handler will be run. So this is like an important stage because in here you can add like uh, const instances like a database connection or bot bot trick instance uh, or create a big file before or lambda handler run. Uh, then the handler is like the main entry point of the of the lambda. Uh, so everything of this code is like regular code. You can return JSON code, or you can run another type of response. But like the common way is return a JSON body. <clears throat> okay, this is like our source code. And the other thing that is important, we have our templates. The template basically is the YAML file that we use to define the services that are going to be deployed to the cloud. The first line identifies the capabilities of the template. Basically, we have only one version. This is like the only default value that we can use. The second line identifies an AWS cloud formation template, this template. <laughs> as an AWS SAM template file. So you can see SAM like a powerful clone formation. Uh, and both tools are like Terraform, but you can, you only use cloud formation and SAM only for AWS. And Terraform, you can use it for any cloud. Uh, the next, descriptors so the next labels are for a project this description is for our template not for our services just for the template so we can define our resources because we are going to deploy a server less lambda we have to add that type and we define the properties that we talk about later uh before <laughs> So the function name is going to be retrieve winners function. The runtime, we are going to use Python 3. The timeout is we only need five milliseconds. We don't need more time. The memory size also is like the default value because our code is super basic. The architecture, we are going to use this one. Uh, the package type is zip, so everything will be zipped in a file, including our source code and our requirements. The code or the location of our code is this one. We need to add 
the location base on the location of the template. That's why we have these two points. And the handler is the entry point of or Lambda. This is up. At this app, it means this file. And Lambda handler is the name of your function. So if you change these those values, you need to change it here in the handler. This description is the description of the Lambda, and you can add tags. It's like a good idea to have tags to group some resources. And the output, once we deploy our code, we can see this value that basically is the ERM of our function that is an ID of our resource. Okay, and the other folder is our requirements. We have dev requirements and local dev requirements. Uh, we are going to use dev requirements to be used to be deployed. And we have in assets some payload example to test our Lambda. And I think those are the basic folders. Oh yes, we have some basic unit tests just to make it real. And everything is going to be orchestrated by a make file. So we have different commands. Uh, we can validate the template. What template? This template. So if we create a not valid template, this command should tell us. Build, build or call to build and create the zip package to deploy. That uh, zip um, file is going to be uploaded to S3 and then will be downloaded by the AWS Lambda. We can invoke locally or Lambda, but for that we need to have installed Docker. Mm. And run our tests. I think we can start with our test. That is everything okay. We can check if our template is valid. Validate template. Hmm. As you can see, this is an error because the credentials need to be set up in order to check that all the resources and you have all the policies, the right policies to create that resources. So first we need to set up our credentials. Personally, I think like the easy way is to have a profile. In that profile, you define your credentials. And in that way, you can have many credentials in the same computer. Uh, Personally, I think this is like an easy way to handle your credentials. So once we have our credentials set up, we can validate our template. And we see that it's a valid template and we have the right policies. So in theory, we can deploy these, these resources. So, Let's proceed to do it. Make, deploy, add the environment. So this make file is going to call some tool. And this some tool is going to read the some template to create those resources. The main resource that is going to be created is a stack. A stack is a single unit where all the, your resources are going to be created. So this stack, uh, in this stack, the lambdas will be created, 
the roles will be created. All the elements that you define in your template is going to be inside that stack. <clears throat> so we can see the progress. First, a cloud formation stack needs to be created, then a role for that Lambda, and then the Lambda itself. So because we defined our outputs in this template, the ARM of our Lambda, this is the output of your template. So the description, Windows Lambda function, and the value. Uh, let team, what else? Successfully created. So now we can go to our AWS console to test our Lambda. Okay. So the first section that we are going to see is cloud formation. In cloud formation, we can see the stack created. And this stack has all the events to be needed to create that resources. So you can see if everything goes wrong, you can see in here what step failed and why. This is very useful because you can see if you are missing a policy or you need to create a role previously. So here in the stack, you can see all the events and if they were created successfully. And at the end of these sections, we can see the template that were, were used to create the resources. So this is our stack. The second one is our Lambda. Let's see. Because it's a regional service, you need to check that you are in the right region. If not, you are not going to be able to see the Lambda created. So we move to the right region. And in here, we can see the package size. It's not too big. And the runtime, Python 3, and the handler of the Lambda. Uh, because we have dependencies or requirements that are pygantic, our code is too big to be shown in this console. But we can test it. So let me use one of these payloads. For example, if we want one winner and we have two users, we expect to receive some B is the winner. So let's test it. Example. That's So this is the expected output. And this is the duration of our call, one milliseconds. If you remember, we defined in our template that the timeout is five milliseconds. So we are fine. We can even use less time amount. We can add like three and we are going to be fine. Uh, and our code, or we only spend like two milliseconds. So this is the time that will be sharp in our account. And this in iteration is these stages that we talk about that because of the Lambda is not alive, it is sleeping. We need to wait this amount of time that the Lambda configure and download the code. So this, if you can say it, this is like death time. This time the client is waiting. So if your code is bigger and bigger and bigger, this init time 
will be greater. Also, if you have more dependencies, more requirements, it need duration will be longer. And finally, this is like the logs that we use because we don't use any logs. We see nothing, only AWS information like the start request ID and the end request ID. Every request has an ID, so you can identify every single request. But it's useful because you can see the duration, the build duration, the memory size, and the max memory. So that's useful. Uh, for example, if we use this Lambda with any payload, We also have a status code accordingly of that payload. And we see that the duration is less than the previous one because the Lambda is already alive. So because it's already alive, we don't need to wait to our, a new Lambda awake. Uh, but if we keep waiting, the Lambda will be killed. And then if we make another request, the new Lambda needs to be created and we need to wait until all the Lambda is set up. Uh, so that's our code deployed. Mm. My terminal is freezed. OK. We can also use SAN to test our Lambda locally. Oh, let's do that. Uh, make a start. <clears throat> we need to define what template. So, Uh, so basically, this command use Sam and Sam reads that template and runs the Lambda locally. So we can now invoke that Lambda. In the make file, we also have that command. And we need to send the name of the event. For example, let's use the same one winner. One winner dot JSON. No. Dot JSON. And this lambda is will be called. And we can see the payload. But this request is locally. But they simulate all the the response that we see in here in the console. The start request and request, the start request and request, like the, a summary of that request at the payload. A summary of that payload and or payload. Uh, okay, so. Another advantage of this resource, of this service, is that we can keep it in our account. And if anyone uses it, they are not going to charge us. Uh, so we can keep our Lambda alive, like there. But we can also kill it, like destroy all the resources. Uh, to Destroy all the resources. We basically use SAM delete to delete that stack. The stack is that we see previously. So if we delete the stack, all the resources linked to that stack will be destroyed. Some resources need a confirmation for the user to be deleted. That's why I need to delete first a role that was created for that Lambda. 
So that's why this code make draw this environment. Okay. So the stack, this stack will be the try and the template file, this template was uploaded to S3 to be used. So in that way you can version your template. So if you change something, another template will be uploaded. So yes, we want to delete that. And these are the objects that needs to be dropped. It takes some time, so let's wait. And all the resources were deleted. So if we go back to a stack, we see nothing. That, that is an advice. If you delete resources by command line, make sure that those resources are deleted because sometimes it keeps there and they charge you. So let's go back to Lambda and there's no Lambda. So we destroy successfully our resources. And that's our example. The cloud formation is deleted. And if we go to the filling dashboard, we because we are in the free tier, we are free charge basically for that service and this those requests. Mm. And that's it. Yeah, that's it for my side. I don't know if you have some comments out. Oh, okay, do you include the dependency files in the package or does Lambda runtime install them from requirements? Yeah, we need to define those requirements. In here, in our make file, our build command, use sum, and we pass as an argument the name of the template and the requirements. Basically, the requirements are at X file, and that X file will be used to download all the requirements, and some will create this package of your code. So if we open this file, we can see all the requirements and our code. There are going to be uh, like a single bunch of code. So if you have in your source code a name that is the same as some of your dependencies, it could be a problem. Uh, make sure that your names are different from your requirement because all the code will be at the same level. Uh, any other question? Yeah. Uh... Seems, seems like no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, thanks a lot, uh, Lucario, for this performance and uh, thanks uh, all for joining. Uh, we will be happy to see all of you next event. Have a nice day or evening. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Have a great day. Bye-bye.